Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've been working on a massive aluminum based project up in the Red Forest, and I noticed that I've developed a kind of loose set of rules when designing blueprints. They kind of help me keep things organized and walkable, and I thought I wanted to share some of those here. So for this video, I'm not building anything from scratch, but I thought I'd walk through a finished design and explain how and why I chose to make them the way I did. For this factory, uh, I wanted to produce about 2,000 aluminum casings, 2,000 outclad sheets, and 500 empty fluid tanks per minute. So between the sloppy alumina, electrode scrap, heavy oil residue, petroleum coke, and pure copper ingots, I'm going to have a network of over 150 refineries. On top of the actual production, I want to be able to feel like my factory was made with walkability in mind too. I thought I'd focus on the sloppy alumina blueprint since it was the first set of refineries I made and it kind of sets the tone for what I'm going for overall. My first rule with any blueprint is start with a raised floor by stacking two 4 meter foundations on top of each other in a corner and then building out the floor from the top of that stack. That gives me a comfortable buffer for logistics underneath and sets a consistent height for the factory floor for other blueprints that are going to be connected later. I built this in a Mark III blueprint designer, uh, even though it would fit in a Mark II. I like to start with a larger space and then kind of trim it down as I go. It uh, just gives me a little bit more room to think about the infrastructure as I'm building it. I usually keep the blueprints to about two or three machines each, especially for larger builders like refineries. I chose two refineries for the sloppy alumina blueprint because if I had placed three, then I'd end up with 27 refineries and I need to delete a bunch of stuff. Now our logistics are going to come in from left to right, both for the input and the output. Now usually I keep the belts and pipes under the logistics floor together, but the refineries have this kind of natural indentation at the top, and I kind of I want to use it for the, the water pipes in, in this recipe. To do this, we're setting steel frame foundations so that it lines up with the edge of the base foundation at the top of the refineries. Then we place a pipeline floor support right at the edge of the steel frame foundation, right where these open spaces are. We'll zoop down frames to the end of the blueprint, and then we'll build out our Mark II pipes from the floor supports that we put down. The pipe on the right, closest to the inputs, is our priority pipe. The one on the left is our supplemental pipe. The pipe closest to the refinery inputs gets a junction between the two refineries, and a Mark II pipe comes down into another junction that splits into two Mark I pipes to feed the refineries directly. This other Mark II pipe in the middle is for the wastewater that will be coming from the electrode scrap recipe further down the line. Since we're recycling the wastewater, we actually only need about 1,600 cubic meters of fresh water come in from the top. I'm still working out all the exact logistics for how we're going to get the wastewater back here, but those vertical junctions prioritize the lowest pipe coming in, so we know the wastewater won't get clogged when everything is connected. Remember though, a Mark II pipe can only move about 600 cubic meters of water, so what we really need is another pipe to come in and act as like a third supplemental pipe. So, back up at the top, we're going to add a junction further down from the horizontal junction we just put in, and we're going to connect that horizontal junction to another horizontal junction on our supplemental pipe so that it can continue to feed into our priority pipe. We place another floor support right above the supplemental pipe at the top of that steel frame foundation. You run the pipe down, and then near the end, you connect the two supplemental pipes together with a vertical junction. Then I place down some more foundations so that everything looks, you know, neat and put together. And that will give us about six or 1,800 cubic meters to work with as it's working its way through. So we're kind of doing the same thing here on the output. Uh, we're going to have to deal with 6,200 cubic meters of alumina solution per minute, so we're going to need about eight Mark II pipes to, to cover that main alumina bus line. So I start setting up the solution pipelines similar to the water ones above. To get my spacing right, I'm placing down three pipe floor supports right next to each other at the edge of the foundation, and then deleting the one in the middle. I run two Mark II pipes down to the other end, and the baseline is set up. After that, I'm going to get the vertical pipe supports and I'm going to zoop up so that I can run three pipes at every other vertical support above on both sides. That'll give us enough room to connect them through junctions later on. Now again, since vertical junctions prioritize the bottom, we can't fill from the bottom or else it's just never going to work right. So what you need to do is you want to place a horizontal junction about one meter out from the outputs of each refinery and connect them to the refineries with a Mark I pipe. Then connect the two junctions with a Mark II pipe. Now, standing in between the two refineries, place a 
a pipe floor hole roughly in between the refinery outputs and the junctions, so like half a meter out. Next, copy the foundation you put the floor hole in and nudge it up to about where the power connectors are for the refineries. Now put a floor hole up in that foundation directly above your first floor hole and connect the two with a Mark II pipe and delete the top foundation, but don't delete any of the floor holes yet. First, place a junction as close to the top of the pipe as possible, facing towards the pipe bus. Attach a wall support along a steel frame wall at the back of the pipeline bus a little to the left of the top junction. Then place another wall support closer to the top vertical junction furthest from the refineries. Connect the bus to the nearest wall support in horizontal to vertical mode, Connect the wall supports to the Mark II pipe in straight mode, and then connect the wall to the top junction with a horizontal to vertical pipe. Back at the bottom, place a hydraulic pump as close to the bottom right junction as you can. We'll need the head lift to get the fluids all the way up. Now add a vertical junction to the bottom pipe between the horizontal junction and the pump, then run a Mark II pipe to our middle pipe. And that's how it's all set up. Now the belts are where things start to get a little bit complicated because we're going to be moving about 5,200 bauxite per minute, but the fastest belts we have can only carry up to 1,200 units per minute. We need to set up a belt compressor, similar to what we did with the pipes, where the closest belt to the inputs will always be fed. I have basically the same setup over here, just so you can see it in action. It's just a combination of smart splitters and priority mergers. Smart splitters are programmed so that everything goes out on the right and the center output feeds the overflow down the line. Priority mergers are fed from the center and the left inputs with a priority set to the center input. Now the pattern on the priority belt goes priority merger, smart splitter feeding in the refineries, and then a priority merger. The supplemental belt beside it gets a smart splitter, a priority merger, and then another smart splitter. You can put another smart splitter on the third belt over, which is going to feed into the priority merger on the supplemental line. This way, if the priority belt ever runs out before it hits that first smart splitter, the supplemental belt will start feeding in. And the same thing if it runs out once after that smart splitter. So I start this by placing a row of conveyor belt ceiling mounts at the edge of the foundation furthest away from the refinery inputs. And then I nudge five spaces between each support to leave enough room for the mergers and the splitters. Also, I always use the fastest belts available for the throughput, but we're using Mark III belts and lifts for the branches that feed the refineries directly since those only need 400 bauxite per minute. Catwalks are vital to my designs, both as a walking path but also as scaffolding for signs as lights and painted beams to help hide power lines. My main rule with catwalks is that you start by placing a staircase on the floor of the foundation and then build from there to set the height. Catwalks need to work their way around the machines and I use stairs to raise up a level on the platform, never ramps. Setting up lights on the catwalk is actually really easy. You start with a painted beam placed underneath the catwalk right down the middle. It doesn't need to go very far, just enough to place a small billboard onto the bottom of it. Just line the billboard up on that beam and flush with the end of the catwalk. After that, go into the options, set the icon to none, delete the text, and pick your color from the bottom row of the color up. Bump the emissions up to two or three. Once that's done, you can just keep placing signs one end to another down the catwalk. Remember to delete the beam afterwards so it's not sticking through the top of the catwalk. My overall vision here is kind of a sprawling network of buildings for each part of the production line up in the Red Forest. But since bauxite's kind of all over the place up there, it made a lot of sense to have it set up there, but I also am going to need oil, which is at the east end, and I'm not sure where I'm going to get the copper for. So a sprawling complex kind of made more sense than one big building. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and let me know in the comments what some of your building rules are. Also, uh, please consider subscribing uh, through the video. It helps me understand what people like to see and what to make more of. I'm still recovering from a nerve issue, so my uploads have been a little behind the past couple of months, but I'm hoping to get more up soon. 
My goal here is to unlock all the achievements in my current playthrough, and then I want to start on a creative world where I work on, you know, setting up all of the alternate recipes and standard recipes to compare them, and just sort of experiment with some other things. But, you know, let me know in the comments what you'd be interested in seeing as well. Anyway, thanks again, everybody. See you in the next one.